So in this tutorial, I'll be using um, two IDEs, um, Speak Editor and iCode Go. So I have so much in store for all of you. So I'll be starting out first with um, Speak Editor. No, let's just try iCode Go. All right, so it's been a while since I showed you how to use this um, you know, IDE. It's an alternative to um, PHP Storm or VS Code. But this one is for our mobile phones. So I'm going to start with the, the PHP web server and the MySQL database server. I'll be posting the link to download this app in the comments because this app is not is no longer on the Play Store for some reason. It's not being maintained, so that's why it was it was taken down. And that's the file part to the most recent folder um, used by iCode Go. So I'm gonna look for Speak Editor and Z Archiver. This is my file manager because it's more cleaner. Well, it reminds me of a desktop application, that's why I use it. Use it. The other ones just look too, you know, mobile friendly. But this one gives you more control over your files. And you can even see in files too. So this file is the default, you know, page you see when you launch the web server in iCode Go. It just shows the default PHP page, showing you all the PHP configuration, the PHP versions, and so forth. So I'm going to test it out to see if that's the case. So I'm going to launch the uh, web server, but for, I'm, I'm going to show you the, the root folder first to see where it's coming from, the, the file part. So this IDE is hosting all the files in the www folder and currently only one file is in the folder. I'm going to open, I'm going to launch the server to see the output of this, the file's contents. And as you can expect, it's just showing you the PHP's configuration and specification. So now that we know that the web server is working and it's serving the files in the folder, we can safely remove this file and put the files that we want to you know, host, for example, our own website inside that folder. So let's do just that. All right, so this function is what we use to echo the you know the PHP configuration details for a specific PHP version but in this case we're using PHP 7.5 or 7.3 about that so I'm gonna launch speak editor and create a new project to use as our tutorial to learn PHP and MySQL so I'm going to choose no framework because we, we want no files to initially start with. So I'm going to give this project a name. I'm going to call it um, create database, you know, because that's what we're going to do, create a database. All right, so I, I hope that explains what we're going to do. All right, as you can see, there's no files here. It's just an empty folder. So I'm going to create a folder to store our database configuration in. Um, I'm going to call it database config for short. I'm going to create a CSS file to start out with too. So I'm going to create a new file called database connection to store our database connection details, our variables, if you want to call it that. I'm going to create a CSS file to, to store, you know, the styles to add some margin to the page so we can see our content better. All right, so this is just applying a rule to the body of the page. They give it a um, padding and margin of 30. All 
All right, so I'm going to do chat GPT and ask it to give me an HTML boilerplate code because I'm not going to type out the HTML code by hand. All right, so just like that, we have a full-fledged HTML boilerplate code to put in our index.php file. All right, so this index.php file is our project's entry point. It's the first file the web server will look for to, you know, launch. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna name this create a database. That's the first, you know, heading you'll see when this page is launched by the web server. All right, so as you may be wondering, this file is not an HTML file even though we have HTML in it, it's PHP because ph the, the that PHP extension allows you know this file to be dynamic, not static. So the, the .php extension allows it this file to execute PHP code. All right, so back to our database connection file, we're gonna de define our database constants so we can you know connect to our database. All right, so we need a to define our database host. So we need to give this host a name. So I'm gonna say DB host and assign it to local host. Because this local host is our device's IP address. And I'm gonna define our database username. I'm sure you already know this. All right, so our database username will be root because root is the, the default MySQL database username by default. But when you bring it to production, the username can be anything you specify it to be. But let's just use root for now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna define the database password as an empty string but I'm just going to write a comment just so, you know, all of us can learn the, the hard way. Because building a, a good foundation is very important, especially when learning basics, because the fundamentals is very good. Once you know the fundamentals, the, a, the AI will just give you warp drive speed in terms of learning new things. Alright, so we're going to set our um, variable DB password and assign it to an empty string because we don't need a password to access the database. All right, so here we're going to make a connection to the database. As you can see. So I'm going to use a variable con because con is more you know, friendly, it's easy to recognize to see. Um, it's, it's, it's the most common variable people use when making a variable to hold the connection. I mean, hold a reference to the database connection. So we're gonna, we're gonna use the, the MySQLI um, underscore connect function. And we're gonna pass some arg arguments. We're gonna pass the, the host the database host as the first argument then we're gonna pass the database user as the second argument and keep in mind that these are positional arguments so it had to be in order but you see them Alright, so we don't need these files anymore, so we're going to close them. Alright, so we have successfully defined our database um, constants. And those constants will allow, it, allow us to make a connection to the database. So we need to import 
our database connection to use in our entry point that the web server will, will launch. All right, that's it. We, we successfully imported our database connection using one line of code. And it has to be at the top of the file for our best results. All right, so we're going to write some PHP code in the body um, of this um, entry point page. All right, so after we have imported our database connection, we need to we need some PHP code to execute. after the connection is imported so if we're gonna speak in pseudocode um, after the connection is made to the database we need to create a database right so I'm gonna show you the command to create a database in SQL so we're gonna call this database my first database And that's our query but we're going to use this query later but we're just assigning it to our variable so we're going to create a result variable and this variable will hold a reference to our database connection and the query that we just created so we're going to write we're going to put the, the connection there as the first argument and the query as the second argument and these are positional they have to be in that order and that's where we're, we're reusing the connection variable that's in this file in case you're wondering where the connection variable came from even though it's not directly in this file so now that we have the result variable defined we're going to write an if statement so that's the code snippet so if the result is true if the result variable as a as a true value we're going to you know print to the screen that, that the database was successfully created and then after we successfully created the database we're gonna close the database connection to ensure that there are no memory leaks I learned this lesson the hard way because when you bring this code to production and your free trial allows you 50 connections to the database at any given time, if you don't close the necessary connections, then resources won't be freed up so other users can use. So it will affect user experience. So let's just launch our database server and log in without a password to see. I'm going to show you that there is there are no databases currently there so as you can see it's only the default databases that are there we did not create any there are only four databases there so let's go back to our um, I code go and go back to speak editor All right, so I'm gonna export this project. So, I mean, I'm gonna export the project to the web server to host the files for our website. And you don't need an internet connection to access it. So I'm gonna, let's see. Um, before I export it, I, I need to take this file out of the web server and cut it and put it in a different folder. I mean, I could just delete it, but I need to save this file just in case I need it to demonstrate that the web server is working. So let's, let's just put it in a trash folder for now. Alright, so right now our web hosting folder is empty. So we are now free to put our website assets there to host. So let's export our project. So click on share and choose Z archiver to export the files or any file manager that you have installed so I'm gonna click this button to export the files and I'm gonna look for the icode go folder 
there it is and data files folder and uh, www folder then paste it there all right so um for some reason it, it failed so i'm gonna have to try again i mean it happens sometime but i have to show you that it does happen sometime it's it's not a bug it's just that my phone has low resources so i'm gonna try again and this time it should work so if your phone doesn't have sufficient ram to navigate between multiple applications at the same time then this could happen excellent all right so right now our website is being our website is ready to be hosted by the php web server so let's go back to icode go and click on database scroll down and click on the open document route to launch the website using um the folder that's hosting it which is www and for some reason i don't see the success message saying that a database was created so i'm not sure what the issue is but i think i know what it is it's a typo um it's a typo probably somewhere you know i could be missing a curly br bracket you know <laughs> uh a closing curly bracket for some reason so let, let's check our index php file that's where most of our code is and uh, it looks like we're missing an i in the mysql um, <laughs> query function because mysql is the most updated one i'm gonna up update this also in speak editor because i'm gonna use speak editor to push the files to github because speak editor as a git client all right so if i launch the web server it should work this time it must work Right, I'm gonna open the database server to show you that no database was created before I proceed. So I'm gonna proceed now on the web server. And that's the database name that we should look for when we launch the MySQL server to see if it's there. So and that's it success database created successfully all right so i hope um this demystified the tech stack of php mysql is actually very easy but i know most of you could can't afford a computer but all of this can be done using a phone but you my your phone has to be four gig ram and higher for you know best performance so in my next tutorial, I'll be slowly building up upon what we have learned so far and you'll become a master of MySQL. Then after you have mastered MySQL, then you'll be ready for Firebase. So that's it for me and see you in the next one.